For quite some time, I saw my friend Pedro pop up online, but I also had it on my wish list for a while. I simultaneously knew about it and yet really didn't know about it. What I mean is that despite having a vague idea of what kind of a game it was and what it had to offer, all of that changed when I actually started to play it. Initially, I thought it was a puzzle game based around fast gunplay. That's pretty much what my friend Pedro has to offer, but I expected limited one-screen levels. There are other indie games out there that are like that, so you could say that my experience with those other ones filled in what I didn't know about my friend Pedro. If you've watched my reviews for a while now, chances are that you can tell that it's not new that it takes little to get me to give a game a try, and that usually leads to me being surprised. In some cases, it's a good kind of surprise, but sometimes it's a bad kind. I wouldn't go so far as to say that I wasn't happily surprised with my friend Pedro, but it left me feeling like I wasn't good enough to fully get the most out of this game. That's something I'll discuss later on. From the start, I quickly noticed the intricate gunplay that my friend Pedro has to offer. There's a lot to have in mind when it comes to its mechanics and at times, that was overwhelming. It's possible that this subgenre of shooter just isn't for me, but seeing as how it has more pros than cons, I wanted to play it to completion. The more I played, the more I learned that combining the game's mechanics to create great looking and high scoring kills was easier said than done. In fact, I came to the conclusion that I probably would have gotten more from this game had I been good at pulling off intricate combos. I wasn't bad to the point where I wasn't able to advance through the game, but I felt pretty bummed out when I was consistently getting C grades. I felt like I was quickly thrown into the deep end of the pool sooner than I would have liked. At the same time, I don't think that a tutorial or focusing on the individual mechanics before combining them would have made things better for me. It's possible that others feel the same way that I do, but seeing as how my friend Pedro has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam, I'd say I'm most likely in the minority here. Whenever I start playing a new game, I don't really have specific things in mind. It usually depends on each game, but at the same time, the overall genre of a game will make it so that certain things stand out over others. Seeing as how precise movement and platforming is a huge part of my friend Pedro, I noticed that jumping around lets a feeling floaty. I'm sure that some were able to use this to their advantage, but the thought that came to mind was that this would most likely lead to me dying. Since I died more times than I can count, I'm sure that ended up happening at least once. Despite feeling like I wasn't good enough, Towards the end of my time with the game, I managed to get a handful of A's. I simultaneously found that surprising and unsurprising. By that point, I was more familiar with the game and I knew what to aim for through my playthrough of the levels, but at the same time, I was dealing with harder obstacles. I feel like the harder things got, the better I did because I was concentrating on getting through the levels in one piece. But to an extent, relying on cheesy tactics allowed me to rack up decently high combos. Either way, I still feel like I'd get more enjoyment from my friend Pedro by watching skilled streamers play it. When it comes to my friend Pedro, the truth is that I didn't plan on writing about it. I felt that I wouldn't have enough to discuss, but I also felt that my point of view wouldn't allow its strengths to shine. What I'm getting at is that I like to be decently skilled with the games I review because I feel that gives me the ability to thoroughly get a critical look at what a game has to offer. My time with my friend Pedro was different when compared to a game such as Garlic, but I'm sure that some out there could still relate to my experience with this one. Even if I felt that I had to juggle a lot and that I wasn't as good as I needed to be to fully enjoy the game, I still did. I enjoyed the relaxed slash comedic tone of it, and its ending led to a legit laugh out loud moment. I enjoyed my friend Pedro, but part of me was left thinking that I preferred the pure platforming levels. Maybe it's because I loved platformers and those types of games were a big deal to me when I was a kid, and to an extent they still are. I liked the platforming levels because I found that it was easier to move fluidly through them and the obstacles that were part of them. During those levels, I felt like I was closest to experiencing what my friend Pedro was all about. It could be wrong of me to feel that way, but I figure it's all good as long as I'm still having a worthwhile experience with a game, even if it's only through appreciating a fraction of what it has to offer. The fact that my friend Pedro has an overwhelmingly positive score on Steam speaks volumes for it. Chances are that you've already played this game and enjoyed it, but if you haven't, I recommend it. It's possible that you could have a similar experience as I did, but what's worth noting is that if you can take a game and make it your own, even in only a small way, that game has accomplished something special. If you played My Friend Pedro, how did you feel about its intricate mechanics? Were you able to advance through the game without struggling? Were there any specific parts of it that stood out to you? If you enjoyed this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you very much for watching.